Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you, uh, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This morning, I will be talking to you about conformity and transformity. I have three points under this. My first point is, what is conformity and why do we do it? First off, conformity means to be pressured on from the outside, like how a sculptor molds his clay. Now, the reason I brought up social media is because that is one way society forces people to conform. For example, one thing that society has forced young women into is having an abortion. When I hear the stories about these women who uh, about these women who abort their babies, it breaks my heart. These women are told that if they abort their child, they will feel empowered, that they will be accepted and be a better woman. My heart breaks for these lives lost. It saddens me to hear the women say that after they abort their baby, they feel depressed. They feel awful. They do not feel empowered, but they are, con they are forced to conform because of what people around them say. Uh, one of the things that I love doing is caring for little children. When I look at these precious lives, I want to gather them all up and protect them from the world. But these women don't understand that. They've been pressured from social media, by their friends, even by their family to abort these children. And if I wasn't taught by my parents that all life matters, including children inside the womb, I might be one of these women forced to conform by the world. When they see these posts on Facebook about the empowered women who abort their children, they are pressured into doing the same thing. This moves me to my second point, what we are called to do. As Christians, we are not called to conform to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. But what does that mean? We have already established that conformity comes from the outside like a sculpture. Transformity, on the other hand, comes from the inside. Take Paul, for instance. When he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, his outward appearance didn't change, but something on the inside did. Paul went from a persecutor of Christians to one of its strongest advocates, <coughs> writing most of the New Testament books. A transformation happens inside all of us when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but the transformation doesn't stop there. 2 Corinthians 3, Verse 18. Um, excuse me. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18 says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is <laughs> the Spirit. Being transformed by the renewing of our minds is an ongoing process. If you are struggling with something society has tried to make you conform to, you're not alone. I struggle too. Maybe not with the same thing you struggle with, but trust me when I say everyone struggles with some sort of outside pressure. In fact, the Bible tells us that we will struggle against the world and we will struggle against the dark forces. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We are going to struggle. And our struggle isn't necessarily against the world or society itself. It's against the dark forces working through the world, working through society, working through social media, working through your friends or your family who are pressuring you to conform to something that the Lord calls you not to do. But we must let ourselves be transformed instead from the inside. 
This leads me to my third and final point, how to be transformed. To answer that question, we must turn to Romans 12, verse 1, which says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. We cannot be transformed unless we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This means that we must offer ourselves to God. Tell him, here I am, Lord. I give you all of me. Jesus was a living sacrifice. And through him, we are saved. And we are called to be like Jesus. Maybe we're not going to uh, die for everybody's sins. Only Jesus can do that. But maybe we'll be called to stand up for what is right, to not conform, to let ourselves be transformed, and to offer ourselves to God and say, I surrender all. And I know it's hard to let go like that. I often struggle with trusting God fully myself. But thanks to my parents and through the Holy Spirit, I find the strength to fight the devil and his lies. The first day of camp, we did a tug of war to demonstrate how the world and the devil are going to pull at us, making it difficult to go from being conformed from the outside to being transformed on the inside. But as our bishop taught us that day, God has sent us help. In Romans 8, verse 26, it says, In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. The word help or helpeth in that verse literally means to take hold of and pull with you. In conclusion, the world is going to try and make you conform with pressure from the outside, like a sculptor molds his clay. But God calls us to be transformed which is only possible by presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. The devil is going to pull at you, but like we learned during the tug of war, no matter how many times we fall into the mud, the Holy Spirit is going to give us strength to try again and not give up. He will be there to pull with us. Like 2 Corinthians 3.18 said, our transformation is an ongoing process. I am still being transformed. My parents and my friends are still being transformed, and I know so are you. Before I close, I would like to add that your friends and family are there to encourage you also. Another thing we focused on this weekend was encouragement and teamwork. Your friends will be there to cheer you on during the hard times. When it feels like all you're doing is being dragged in the mud, just remember these four things. You are not to conform to the pattern of this world, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Holy Spirit will be there with you during that process to help you. And lastly, your friends and family will help encourage you through it. Thank you.